Shut up and sit down. Okay, greeting guys. Welcome back to another episode on your Dr. DIY channel. Today we have a microwave unit. The model is a Samsung CE117PAE. So this is the model. So we have a problem with this uh, microwave. Uh, it is working fine but the microwave unit is not working right so meaning which if you want to preheat your food or heat up your food it is not working but if you want to use convection or the grill that is working so what we are going to do now is we are going to remove the casing and we are going to see what is wrong with this microwave and see the, on the possibility whether can we do any DI works on the repairing of it right so stay tuned and enjoy the show so this is at the back of the microwave so the objective now is to remove this casing so there are a lot of screws at the back we are just going to remove all these screws. Okay, so after we have opened up the microwave, this is how it looks inside. Okay, this part here is all the, all the electrics and the electronics components. Where else? This part here is the enclosure where you put in your food from the front. So this is basically there's no any maintenance works here. Okay. However, this is the magnetron. Right? Most probably this is the one which is faulty, which will be responsible for making your food hot during microwave operation right this is the transformer it's written there very clearly to discharge the capacitor before any maintenance work and that is the capacitor so, so there are many ways you can discharge the capacitor you can see there is two probes here never touch this with your naked hand either you put a electric bulb okay until the bulb completely turn off or you can just put a multimeter and wait until the reading becomes zero okay so the capacitor there is no any uh, charge inside okay because we have already put the multimeter on the two probes here okay there's no any charge so we can safely disconnect the capacitor what we are going to do now, our intention is to investigate, to remove this guy and to see what is the possible problem. This is the magnetron here. So we're going to see whether is this guy the faulty. And on top of that, we're going to just check the circuitry and see is there any burn mark or any fuse which is blown. We're just going to do a random check and of course some maintenance work, some cleaning and all that. Right? Because this has been since year 2013. Okay, have not been opened. So now only it gave way. So let's see what we can do. Okay, upon checking, there are some faulty parts now. There's this fuse connected to the capacitor to the transformer. And the fuse is blown. So we're going to change the fuse. That's number one. Number two, the internal light. You know when you on your microwave, there will be a light inside. The light is not working, so I happen to remove the power where you have the lights there. The light sits here. So the light has been completely ripped apart. So, 
Okay, so the whole module of microwave has been brought out and it is going to be cleaned using a brush. Okay, so it is going to be gently cleaned using a brush because this is a 2013 model and most of the parts inside here is brittle. So if it's handled very roughly, they might crack or break. So it must be handled with extreme care. As you can see the wire here is slightly broken, right? The insulator has came out, so we are going to repair that later. So with that, we slowly just take the brush and we just gently brush the unit to remove all excessive dirt particles. Okay. Observe for any abnormality. If you have a compressor, it will be good because you can use a compressor to gently spray out all the debris out of the module. guys so upon installation or replacing the fuse the microwave is still not heating up so we decided to take out all the important components to investigate in detail what is the problem so some of the components which should be investigated is the capacitor okay so this is the capacitor of the microwave then we got the transformer following to the magnetron then we got the diode okay to ensure one-way flow of current to the capacitor and we also got the fuse we have replaced this but it seems it is faulty as you can see right the fuse has already burned so first thing first you obviously need your term uh, your multimeter multimeter you set the con continuity okay so now we will start with the capacitor this is a 0 0.95 microfarad capacitor plus minus three percent it is a high voltage capacitor it's a 2100 volt you can store AC current inside here so make sure to discharge this capacitor when you want to take all this component out including this guy okay so now uh, how to check to the, see the faulty is just take the continuity put at the both probes of it it should not have any continuity okay so in this case we are getting a continuity so the capacitor is uh, short or it's already spoiled okay then uh, next procedure is to just touch to one probe and touch to the body of the capacitor so this is okay this is okay but the continuity is already gone so this is faulty to see a good capacitor so this is another capacitor right obviously it is not the same uh, in the spec but it is also a capacitor so when you touch the probes together it should not have any continuities okay now this is a good capacitor so now we go to the transformer okay you got your primary side and you got your secondary side so we start with the primary side okay so you have two pins coming out here so you just touch and see is there any continuity yes that should have a continuity now to check whether is there any short circuit 
you just touch one of the pin to the body of the transformer make sure the body of the transformer you can find a place where it's non-coated okay because the whole transformer is a coated with a thin film for insulation purpose so if i touch here and if i touch here i know these two corners are not insulated so i'm going to use them as my reference point so i'm going to touch here touch here to one of the pin okay it's not there's no continuity following to the next pin there's no continuity it must not have any continuity if there's continuity there is a short circuit so this two pin there's continuity it's okay so moving to the secondary side same thing touch to the pin touch to the end of the transformer there is no any continuity we are going to check also for the wires coming out from the transformer so we're going to see for continuity for these two it should have continuity okay but it should not have any short circuit to the body of the transformer so this is pass the second pin also pass so the transformer is okay we keep aside next we move on to the magnetron so this is a high voltage magnetron okay so this guy is responsible in generating the microwave to the microwave food compartment so currently we do not have the heating properties so let's check this now same thing you have only two probes here okay one is labeled with F one is labeled with FA so these two probes that should have continuity between them okay this is good but it should not have any continuity within the probe and the body of the magnetron so let's check for that okay so this pin F pin F with the body no any continuity pin FA and the body there is also no any continuity so in summary this guy is also okay so we keep it aside obviously the fuse is already blown you can see here right so we can also show you here so the fuse is already blown there's no continuity so we've got to replace this fuse 0 0.8 ampere now what about the diode okay so in order to check the diode we got to supply some amount of voltage be it 9 volt and above why because there is a this is a high voltage diode okay so we got to so the resistance is quite high so it is very hard for us to use a thermometer to test because we will not get any valid reading so what we're going to do is we're going to supply a 12 volt dc current to check so in here i've already got a 12 volt so if i supply a 12 volt you can see the multimeter so we are having a 12 volt down okay so what we are going to do the positive side you connect to the positive side of the diode because that this is the positive side so the negative side to the negative of the diode and you simply just sorry the negative you put it positive here and you simply just touch the diode with the other probe you will get a reading of 7.93 instead of 12 volts because the supply is 12 volts you are getting 7.93 because of the drop of the resistance the internal resistance of the diode so this is a good diode to double check just reverse and see is there any same value if there, the value is same meaning which this diode is spoiled okay the value should be close to zero let's just do the reverse now we are getting zero now so this diode is a good diode okay a quick update this is a normal fuse 
0.8 ampere. For microwave, the fuse is a bit different. The fuse looks like this and it's called a high pressure type of fuse. Okay, it's also 0.8 ampere, but this is how it looks like to which we stand the microwaves generated this is to be used and not this a faulty capacitor will have a this will have a continuity a good capacitor will not have a continuity so we're going to install the transformer here so the transformer consists of four screws which is mounted from the back so we just have to tilt the microwave up and you can screw it from the back please bear in mind when you want to tilt the microwave you got to take out this rotating plate okay else the rotating plate inside there it will topple or you might break so that's what we are going to do now. Next, we install the capacitor. Okay, so the new capacitor sits here. So we're going to put a bracket and we're going to install it. Okay, so the capacitor has been installed, the wires has been connected, okay, uh, the one of the probe, the diode to be connected to the body of the microwave, okay, so obviously the marking has been done, so we follow back the marking, next is the magnetron, which is here, okay, so it is very easy to remove the magnetron, you have four screws, two up, two down, so before moving this guy, you got to disconnect this wire. Okay. And bear in mind, you got to discharge the capacitor before doing that. Okay. So one, two, three, and four. Put back the socket. Socket is done. So we got to place the thermal sensor. So this is the thermal sensor. Okay, so we have fixed back everything. So we do a test run now. We take a glass of water, we put it inside. Okay, so we want to see whether the microwave works. So we just set it for one minute. So it's turning, the light is working. So we wait. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, I wonder you can see the smoke, you can see the vapor, okay, yep, it's warm, so it's working, so the problem is solved. Okay guys, so the microwave finally is uh, working, so now we are just doing a steam clean of 15 minutes, so the microwave is basically uh, self cleaning and self disinfecting itself because this microwave they have these features okay okay if you have any comments place your comments at the comment section right uh, don't forget to support the video guys subscribe to the channel till we meet again right stay home and stay safe